disconnect stopping me from, from yes. believing in a higher power? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You don't believe in the higher power of this book. Read that again. No, ye not. You don't take I care of your beard. temple. Do you shave your beard? I shave because it don't grow, man. It just passes, so I don't let it grow. If it grew like y'all, like, you said it. You said you shave it because it doesn't grow. It don't grow, man. But God says you can't shave it. So what did you do to God's temple? I heard that before. You, that means you destroy God's temple. Right. There's many things that you're doing right now that destroy God's temple. God gave you a temple. He, so, he, he let you borrow a temple, and you, you shaved off the beard of that temple, and you put around a, 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 emble, a, a symbol of a false god around that same temple. So I shave. I'm sinning. I'm wrong. Right. You got to fix that. I, you got to repent from it. Read it again. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Uh -huh. If any man defile the temple of God. If you defile the temple of God by putting a false God on that temple. Read. Him shall God destroy. God says he's going to destroy you. Right. Now I don't know what that rock represents, but you know what it represents. So if you know that that's not representations of God himself, God Almighty, the God of Israel, it's best to take that thing and cast it away like a menstrual cloth. Right. All praises that's, to the Most High. See, that's, that's All praise. That's Look, that's what repentance like, looks like. Right. Religion. No, we're not speaking about religion. You telling me I'm we going to hell because I because I cut my. We haven't even spoken I, about hell. I, what, what we haven't you, even you, spoken you, about you hell. Bad things on me because I'm not off. putting. No, you and put something face. bad on you, and I'm trying to get it off of you. Right. Make sure y'all don't wear none of the stuff you said. Don't give me do Isaiah 34 and 16. Do it because y'all because y'all holy and y'all y'all Hebrew Israelites. Y'all can wear what y'all want to wear. We're not Hebrew Israelites. We don't call ourselves Hebrew Israelites. That's crazy, man. I would never tell you you you, you, you dead in yourself because you shaved your face and you got a necklace on. What about the person you are, man? That don't mean nothing. The person that my kids I take care of, my, my girl I take care of, nah, that's that sick. Good. My dogs I raise and make money with. I go to work. You so, celebrate your birthday? Right, the the, right. the, the kid's birthday? When I cut my face, I'm doing the... Do you something. teach your kids to celebrate their birthday? Yes, I do. You don't love your kids? Do you, do you understand sometimes the way you... you you come across with that sound crazy, man. No, it, it sounds crazy because you don't understand the Bible. Right. You don't. My child being born of the years, I, I heard that there was something to that. But come on, man, I, I'm not going to. See what you don't you don't understand that the society the society has twisted the standard of good and evil. My child being born another being here. But God told years. you don't do it. So now what? I never heard that. What is, come on, tell me what that said. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 34 and 16. Isaiah 34. Some other weird, how, that's about Isaiah 34 and 16. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Uh -huh. yeah. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. What's the book of the Lord? The Bible. So the, the Lord says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and do what? And read. And read. This is what our people don't like to do. Right. You don't like to read. You don't like to read. So we're reading the Bible to you. And you're rejecting it. I just told you I studied all five percenters, all of that. That's a lie. Five percent is a lie. What's next? They gonna say the same thing about you. They don't have the book. The Bible is the. Christianity gonna say the same thing. No, Christianity thing. doesn't teach what's in the Bible. Right. The Israelites are the only ones that teach what's in the Bible. None of that. That's right. None of that. But That's the problem. That's the problem. Was that it? I gotta follow what somebody put in the book. No one of these shall fail. God told you this. None shall want her mate. None shall want her mate. So it don't matter what the five percenters are doing. It don't matter what the Muslims are doing. It don't matter what the Christians are doing. The Bible says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So when you read what the Bible says, it's your responsibility to apply what the Bible says. You got what I want? 30 and 22. 30 and 22. 30 and 22. Two pages over. My celebrating birthdays and aunt. I hope all your people got with you is following that same. We all God follow God. what the Bible says. Yes, right. This is what the Bible says about an uncle on your chest. Read. Right. Without, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 22. Huh? Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images. That graven image is defiling your covering. Your covering is supposed to be this Bible right here. God's laws and statutes and commandments, but you defile it with your graven images. Be quiet, be quiet, Lorenzo. Hold on, hold on. A silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. That, that ark is a molten image of silver and gold. Read on. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress claw. You see what my brother did? My brother realized, I'm not coming down on you. I'm lifting you up. Nah, I'm not a, like a, a preacher in church don't even take questions. Right. Right. Don't say questions, but he, but he found something wrong with A preacher somebody. in a preacher in church will make you sit your ass in a chair for two hours 
pay your money and get the hell on. Right. Right. I don't do that. But you sound like a preacher to me. I don't sound you, like you a preacher to you. You, find them false you ain't never seen a preacher out here doing this. Matter of fact, jump up to verse 20. Me and, and targeting me. Verse 20. Like, I'm the only and don't the, the Lord know. give you the bread of adversity. No, you the only one bucking against it. Because you got correct. Did you not just get corrected? I'm no, 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 Lorenzo, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not even you and your emotions right now. No, my I'm brother right here. here, my brother right here. I'm sitting here listening he was smoking to a cigarette. On my aunt, man. What's your name right here? Listening to you. Smiling. Smiling. Now, somebody else, my you brother right here me. was smoking a cigarette. Here, I said, brother, stop smoking the cigarette. It's destroying your body. You know what he said? He said, you know what? You're right. I said, put the cigarette and the box of cigarettes in the trash. He repented from the evil that he was doing. Oh, right. This brother has an onk on his chest that's in opposition to the same Bible that tells him not to smoke cigarettes. Right. But when I tell him to take the onk off, he wants to ramble and talk and complain and whine and cry and do everything. Are you, are you, talking to me now? you want to do everything. Yeah, that's what you're doing. I'm conversating back and forth with you, but, I'm but you're, not, you're not repenting. Because oh, I'm, I'm not doing what he did. I, you're I'm not whining. doing what God said. I, I said right. Because you, not, I didn't you have him, not repented from your sins. And take this off that's what, what a wise man right. would do. Right. And then you want to say we like the Christian pastors. Read that again, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity uh -huh. and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. See, the Christian pastors are the so-called teachers that's been put in a corner. Right. You know what that corner is? It's the Christian church. Come on. And you can't even see them. You got to go to them if you want to get the word of God. Come on. We come out here to show you what you're doing go wrong according to God. According to God. I'm not giving you my opinion about anything. You, by your own confession, said that's representation of Egyptian society. I showed you in the Bible that God is against Egyptian society. Right. And then we dug a little life. deeper on what does that represent? It represents life. Oh, okay. So what's the whole represent? It represents the woman being over the man. Oh, okay. Well, the Bible says that the man is over the woman. So that right there is teaching our people lies. Right. Right. Every time you look in the mirror and you, you freshen up a little bit, you freshening that's up to not, a lie. That's how I'm looking at it. That's not what I would tell It my don't friend. matter how you're looking at it. We have to look at it through the perspective of God. Right. 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 You looking at it through the perspective of an individual. So God, Read on. So God, so God but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. The real teachers of God, your eyes are going to see them. Right. When you drive up and down, Jefferson Avenue, you're going to see him. Right. When you're on 35th and, and Madison, you're going to see him. Right. When you're on 33rd and Smoke, you're going to see him. Right. When you're on 28th and Wickham, you're going to see him. Right. When you're on 9th and Ivy, you're going to see him. Right. When you're uptown in Aqueduct, you're going to see him. Right. When you're uptown in Teardrop, Cypress Court, you're going to see him. Because right. that's where we at, teaching the word of God. That's right. Read on. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying. Because you're going you're gonna to hear the word of God, you're going to get mad at it. You're going to get in your feelings. You're going to get emotional. And you're going to hear a word behind you. Because what you're going to do, you're going to walk off upset. Like that dude down there running his mouth. Read. This is the way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in the ways of God. That's, right. That's what the Bible says. We come out here to teach repentance. Repentance. That means whoever we encounter, we're going to find the fault in you, and we're going to show you what God says you're supposed to be doing. Right. So Smiley, for instance, let's redirect the attention because you don't like the attention on you. All right? So, uh, Leviticus 19, 27. My brother Smiley, we come out here because we love our people, and we see that our people are doing the opposite of what God has told us to do. Right. So we come out here to tell our people, this is what God says you must do. It's up to you whether you accept it or not. God says don't have that on your neck. I'm going to tell you to do that. It's up to you whether you do it. God says don't smoke cigarettes. It's up to you whether you continue smoking or not. This is what God says about my brother Smiley. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your beards. Neither shall thou mar the corners. Excuse me. Ye shall not the corners of thy beard. The Bible says that I cannot mar or shave off the corner of my head. Or my beard. Leviticus 21 and 5 on the same point. Leviticus 21 and 5. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make baldness upon their head. We cannot make baldness upon our head, brother Smiley. That's what God said. And we must let God be true. And every man a what? A, liar. a what? A liar. God must be true. Where does God's truth come from? His law. That's right. God's law says that a man can't shave his face. So what don't I do with my beard? 
I don't shave it off. I used to at one point in time before I understood the standard, which is this Bible. But now that I understand God's standard, I must live by God's standards. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. No cuttings in your flesh, that's no tattoos. That's no shaving. You're not done, you can repent from that. You don't have to keep shaving your face. Smiley, do you have to wake up next Wednesday and shave your face? No, you don't have to do that. Right. You're talking about you doomed. you doomed by your own confession. Right. Right. you doomed by your right. own right. will. Right. you doomed by your own works. Right. You can try to put them words in my mouth. I'm doomed by what I'm, you're Now, I'll me. put you God's say, words right. in my mouth, right. and right. you're going to do what you're going to do with it. But it will not go out void. That's for sure. Give me 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Because, see, Smiley, the issue that we have in our community, and Brother Lorenzo, and Brother way. Marcellus, the issue that we have in our community, we got too many individuals. What? Too many individuals. You got your opinion, you got your perspective, and you got your thought. And guess what they do? They lead us in three different di different directions. That thought process does not promote unity. But it's, you know, it's the same thing with um, spirituality or y'all. No, I'm gonna show you what spirituality is. First Corinthians one and ten. Hold on. First Corinthians chapter one, verse ten. Uh -huh. Now I beseech you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Read. that ye all speak the same thing. You see what the Bible says? It doesn't give space for me to have my own opinion. Right. For you to have your own perspective. Hmm. For you to have your own thought. And for you to have your own feeling. Right. Read it again. That ye all speak the same thing. We must speak the same thing. Read on. And that there be no divisions among you. The only way for there to be no divisions amongst us is for us to unite under this banner right here called the Bible. That's right. The only way that there's no divisions between me and this brother is because me and this brother read the same law. Right. And it says, don't shave your face. So he didn't shave his and I didn't shave mine. Right. Me and him got two completely different styles of clothing that we like to wear. But God's style of clothing says whatever shirt you got on, got to have fringes on the bottom right, right. so that unites me and my brother right. without the laws of God I wouldn't have even met this brother right. I wouldn't know that brother I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't take a trip with that brother right. and I wouldn't be standing next to this brother but with the laws of God as our standard we can come back and unite our community back as one right. read on but that ye be perfectly joined together God wants us to be perfectly joined together in what in the same mind. In the same mind. Meaning we have the same perspective. We have the same. No, no, no. With so many other ways, other things being taught, how can you break some? You watching it happen in front of your face. Right. I'm not Christian or none of that, but how can, like I'm saying, so say some Muslims, some Christians up here, like hardcore, like how can you, with everybody having all these different opinions, how can you get somebody to, everybody to focus on one opinion when besides being, being taught to slavery, then you got Muslims at 5%. Everybody got all these different ways of thinking. How can you, you, you doing what you're doing is good because you're out here, but how is that really going to make, you know what I'm saying, everybody come, like, everybody, is, I can't see everybody being one thought because everybody got so many other ways they've been taught from babies to whenever, so it's I understand, crazy, you know? I understand, I understand. You got a good question. What's up? I saw the Isaiah scripture in the Hey, Lord's will. Uh, Lord's will. I keep, I keep. The, the Lord's will. L listen, Lorenzo, the Lord's will that you got written right there, the Lord's will is what's going to unite our people. Right. It's going to take away all the perspectives, all the religions, all the denominations, and bring us back together as one people under the laws of God. That's Read right. what you got. We keep it. See? That ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. The same mind and in the same judgment. All right. Now you said, now how we, give me that in Luke 14. I can't get dudes to work with me on a business together, making money. I don't know how you get them to change their thought process on how to live. We go, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you. God, God already gave us the instructions on how to do that. Luke chapter 14, verse 22. Uh -huh. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. So the brother, you had a good question. With all these perspectives, all these religions, all these theologies, all these denominations, how can you get all of our people to unite as one? Read. And yet there is room. 
And there's, there's still room in this feast that's being prepared for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges. Where we at? We're at the highways and the hedges. You got 664 South, 664 North, and the busiest street in Newport News, Jefferson Avenue. Read. And compel them to come in. We come out here to compel our people to come in. Right. Compel means force. Right. We're going to be very forceful. Right. We're going to be very loud. Right. We're going to be very direct. Right. We're going to tell you exactly what you're doing wrong so that you can fix it. It says compel my people, read. Right? That my house may be filled. God wants to fill up his house. That's right. God wants to fill up his house and he told us to fill it up for him. Right. He told us to get out here on these streets and teach my people face to face. Right. Don't wait for them to come to a building and ask them for money and sing songs to them and jump around and hoop and holler. No, we ain't doing none of that. We're going to do what our Lord said. Go outside, teach them face to face. Right. Read. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Give me Matthew 11 and 1. Matthew chapter 11 verse 1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. So Christ commanded his 12 disciples. Let's see what example he left for us. He departed from thence to teach and to preach in their city. Where? In their cities. What we're doing is showing you an example of what Christ looked like. Right. What Christ looked like. So a real Christian that follows Christ will be out in the cities doing the same thing that Christ did. Right. Teaching in the cities. Right. Compelling people to come into the marriage feast. Right. But you can't get into the marriage feast wearing an unk. You can't get into the marriage feast smoking a cigarette. Right. You can't get into the marriage feast with a shaved face. Right. So we're teaching our people what you must do to get everlasting life. Because the marriage feast is symbolic of everlasting life. But it ain't no women wearing pants in the marriage feast. Right. It ain't no men with shaved beards, no cigarettes, no weed, no unks. None of that exists in God's wedding feast. That's right. Read it again. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. So we come out here to teach and preach in our cities. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. What you must do to inherit everlasting life. Right. These are the laws that you're breaking. These are the laws that you need to keep. Right. That's what we come out here to do. Now go back to uh, Isaiah 30 and 22. I ain't going to let up on it. I'm not going to let up on it. Our whole job is to compel or force our people into subjection to the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. right. That's my responsibility. That's right. If I don't fight with you over sin, I'm not doing my job to right. compel you. Right. Read it again. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 22. Yeah. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver uh -huh. and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. These are the same graven images and molten images that taught us lies according to Habakkuk 2 and 18. Read on. Right. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress cloth. Who, would you hold a tampon in your hand? Would you take a used tampon, run a chain through it, Figaro chain, rope chain, Cuban link chain through a tampon and wear it around your neck? It sounds stupid. Make it sounds pain. foolish. Right. Raise your hand if you will wear a tampon around your neck. Nobody. Right. Right. But God says when you have a graven image that taught you lies that's hanging around your neck, it's the equivalent of a menstruous cloth. Make right. it A.K.A. what? A tampon. Right. Right. A used bloody, nasty tampon is around your neck right now. Right. Right. You already said you're going to try to force your, your religion. Yeah, I'm going to force it on you. And, you. and what God says, you either going to get down or you going to lay down. Right. That's what the Lord said. You, you right. to the point of extremism where what you going to do, start blowing up things? Like nah, I ain't blowing nothing up. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to read it to you. you trying to force it? No, I tried to convince you. I went to five and different scriptures. I might, I might take it off when I leave here somewhere. Nah, take it off now, now, bro. You gotta tell me you going to force me. Okay. I hope, Lord, Lord, will you take it off when you leave it? I'm going to force you to listen to what I've got to say. Did I, did I, didn't I force you to take that cigarette up? He, he, he chose to. I didn't say, I didn't say physically force you. I didn't go yank it out your hand and I'm not touching your chain. But 
through the word of God, the word of God is more powerful than my carnal hands. Right. I know that. The word of God is sharper than any sword that I could use to try to cut that chain off oh, your neck. Right. Maybe, right. I take, maybe I take things too literal when you talk about forcing me. Yes, to you're emotional, bro. You're emotional. We've all grew up emotional here in America. Right. That when a man speaks directly to you, that you take it as a threat. Right. I'm not threatening you. You my brother. It's the right. way you said it. Nah, that's what the women say to us. Don't say that to me, bro. Don't say that to me. That's how women speak to me. Right. I speak directly to a woman. She said, well, it's not what you said. It's how you say it. Shut up, woman. I'm not trying to hear that. I'm a man. Right. And I speak like a man. Right. And I speak strong like a man. Right. And when a man speaks strong to me, you know what I do? I say, I say, yes, sir. Right. I say, yeah, I, I, I effed up. Yeah, you know what? I need to fix that. Right. I ain't bucking up to a man talking about, oh, I don't like how you said it. I don't like your approach. That's what women say to us. Right. Been kind of tear me down piece by piece since I've been here. You talk about the arm. I'm my building face, you up. Show you my tattoos. Then you tell me I'm, I'm talking like a fucking female. I got Come you. On, man. I got you. Let me show you, you something. Like let me that, let me show you. Who, I, I, let me show you who I'm you are. I got you. I'm hearing everything you're saying, but you ain't gotta keep going on but with it. Like, like I ain't hear you say that, man. I heard what you said about all of this, but you keep trying to come at me like you're trying to get personal about it. I heard everything about the face, the tattoos. I, for all you know, I might be taking the enemy. I might, you might see me again. I'll be a home different motherfucker. But the way you coming at me, like, yo, I, I'm good, yo. Look, I'm coming at you because I love you, bro. I love you as my own brother. I love you as my own brother. You want to? I don't like the way the fuck you talking to. Lorenzo, stay here for another minute. Focusing on me, nigga. Stay, stay here one more minute, Lorenzo. You gotta focus on me, man. Check, check this out, Lorenzo. Check this out. You have all your little fake ass bodyguards trying to get mad. No, I'm good, yo. I don't like the way you talking to me. I was this. Yo, Lorenzo, yeah, Lorenzo, give me one more chance. Yo, I'm a bitch, man. Nah, you're not. I Lorenzo, right Lorenzo, come here, bro. I got one more scripture for you. One more scripture for you. Lorenzo, come here. This is this, this the scripture for you. Because this is what we see. We see our brothers greater than they see themselves. Right. And when we try to elevate our brothers, sometimes it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow. Right. Give me Psalms 82 and 6. Right. Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. Uh -huh. I have said, ye are God. The Bible says that we are gods. We got to live like a God. Right. We got to walk like a God. Right. But in order for us to be gods, we must apply God's principles. Right. We must apply God's principles. God has principles for how we dress. God has, God has principles for how we eat. But if we don't apply God's principles, what happens to us? And all of you are children of the Most High, uh -huh. but ye shall die like men. God says we're going to die like men because we will not uphold his standard. Right. Lorenzo, this scripture is what we see in you right here. Read it again for Lorenzo. I have said ye are God. This is what Lorenzo, Lorenzo, this, this scripture is talking to you. Lorenzo, Lorenzo, listen to me. We're going to read it again. I have said, ye are God. Maybe nobody ever told you why we out here speaking the way that we speak to you. Because we see you as greater than you present yourself. Right. God says that you're supposed to be a God. God says that you're great. Right. God says that you're special. Right. God says that you're peculiar. Right. And we're the only ones that's going to come out here and show you how to live like that. Right. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Because I don't never want the people to think we're tearing anybody down. Four minutes, yes sir. I don't want nobody to think we're tearing any of our brothers down. That's right. I'm trying to build my sisters up. Right. I'm trying to build my brothers up. Right. I come out here because I love my people. Right. Right. If all I want to do is tear down my people, I could get on Instagram and talk junk about everybody that looks just like me right. and how ugly they are and how stupid that was. That happens all day, every day. I ain't coming out here for that. I'm coming out here for this. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. But right thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. We understand this about our people. We understand that we are a holy people unto our God. Right. But our people have not learned how to live holy. Right. How to be holy. Right. How to dress holy. Right. How to eat holy. Right. Read on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. God chose you, Lorenzo. Right. right. But he ain't chose you to live the way that you've been taught to live here in America. Right. So don't get upset with me when I show you God's standard. How you know how I'm living? All I can judge is the tree, the fruit from the tree. But you don't know, all you're seeing is a, a necklace in my face and you don't know nothing about the that's, person I am. That's all I can deal with right now. But that's telling you who I am? Look, um, the way that a man dresses, the way that a man walks shows what he is. Right. That's what the Bible says. So I got to go off of that. The first thing we always going to go off of is what are we looking at? 
And then we're going to dialogue with our brothers to find out what's in your thought process. And we're going to address whatever comes out. Whatever we see, we're going to address. Whatever comes out is what we're going to address. I got one more script. Taking care of my kids and raising my family, man, being a good dude, all that. I'm a, I got pussy around my neck and my say all that, man. That ain't got nothing to do with me. No, I didn't, see a, I didn't say nothing about, about pussy around your neck. Yes, you did. The tampon, whatever you want to call it. Oh. You, you telling me I'm all of that because of that, man. But you don't know nothing about the person I am, yo. I got you. I could be the greatest dad in the damn world for all you know I, i'm with my kids I, I got i adopted some of my kids I, I i took kids back from bad mamas and everything i do it now yo I don't know if there's nothing bad but, about me but you but lorenzo me down god says you know, that we must raise our kids Minneapolis a particular way space. lorenzo can you accept that i know that god know that. says we must raise our children a particular way yeah. give me deuteronomy six and one no uh, four four and one is that what i want and i raise my kids i don't raise my kids on nothing yeah, crazy seven. man Six and one. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse one. Uh -huh. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. We're talking about commandments, statutes, and judgments. God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Am I right, Lorenzo? That's what we're talking about. Verse seven. Verse seven. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You see what God tells us to do? He says that we must teach our children God's Laws, statutes, and commandments. So as good as a, a father I thought I was before I understood God's laws, once I understood God's laws, I realized I didn't measure up to be a good father. Right. There is no good father that doesn't teach his children God's laws. Right. Because the Bible says, I must teach my children his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. Right. So I don't want to teach your children right now, Lorenzo. Because it's your job to teach your children. Right. So I want to teach you God's standard about how do you dress. God's standard about the necklace that you have around your neck. God's standard about the days that you're supposed to celebrate. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.